Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is about enantiomers. If you want to skip to any particular section of this video, you can do so by clicking the timestamps found in the description section below. Please also make sure to subscribe to this channel as this helps out our channel a lot. Okay, let's get to the video. Enantiomers are a type of stereoisomer. This means that they are molecules with the same molecular formula and connectivity of atoms, but differ in their three-dimensional arrangement. Enantiomers are mirror image isomers of each other and cannot be superimposed onto one another. They are like our left hand and our right hand. They're similar in structure, but are not superimposable. You cannot overlay enantiomers onto one another in such a way that all atoms and groups will coincide. Enantiomers occur when a molecule has one or more chiral centers. Chirality arises from the presence of asymmetric carbon atoms. An asymmetric carbon atom is bonded to four different atoms or groups. This allows for different spatial arrangements of those atoms or groups around the asymmetric carbon atom. Due to this asymmetry, the molecule and its mirror image cannot be superimposed on each other. This makes them chiral molecules. You can see here that this molecule cannot be superimposed no matter how you rotate it. Let's rotate it and see. First, let's rotate the mirror image of the molecule by 120 degrees. We see that chlorine moves into the page, fluorine comes out of the page, and bromine is on the plane of the page. If we rotate it anti-clockwise slightly to try and get it to superimpose on the original molecule that we took the mirror image of, we see that fluorine is now on the plane of the page, bromine is coming out of the page, and chlorine has shifted a little to the right-hand side but still goes into the page. What we want to do is to get fluorine onto the plane of the page because that will help us see if the two molecules can be superimposed onto each other. And here we can see that it cannot be because hydrogen and fluorine are both on the plane of the page and can be superimposed onto each other. However, Bromine and chlorine cannot be superimposed onto each other. If we rotate it again by another 120 degrees, we see that fluorine moves into the page, bromine comes out of the page, and chlorine is on the plane of the page. If we rotate it again slightly anti-clockwise to try and get it to superimpose on the original uh, molecule that we took the mirror image of, we see that bromine is now on the plane of the page, chlorine is coming out of the page, and fluorine has shifted a little to the right-hand side but is still on the plane of the page. If we compare it to the original molecule that we took the mirror image of, we see that hydrogen and chlorine are superimposable. However, bromine and fluorine are not. This lack of superimposability is a fundamental property of enantiomers. This is why they are considered distinct compounds despite having the same atoms. The existence of enantiomers has significant implications in the field of chemistry, especially in that of pharmacology and biology. Enantiomers often exhibit different biological activities. This means that they can have different effects on living organisms. Pharmaceutical companies often need to produce specific enantiomers of a drug as the two enantiomers can have different therapeutic effects or side effects in the human body. In fact, it can also have very detrimental effects. A well-known example of a chiral drug is thalidomide. Thalidomide was introduced in the 1950s as a sedative and an anti-nausea medication. Unfortunately, during this time, the knowledge about different types and properties of enantiomers was not well understood. Thalidomide was marketed as a racemic mixture, 
meaning that it contained equal amounts of both enantiomers. It was later discovered that while one enantioma of thalidomide was effective, the other enantioma caused severe birth defects when the drug was taken by women that were pregnant. Thus, differentiating between these enantiomers is important. Two ways that we can use to differentiate between them is by the use of polarimetry and assessing the interactions of the enantiomers with other molecules, enzymes, transporters, and etc. Polarimetry is a technique that is often used. This measures the rotation of plane polarized light by chiral substances. Enantiomers rotate plane polarized light in opposite directions. If one enantioma rotates plane polarized light in the clockwise direction, that is, towards the right-hand direction, it is labeled with a plus and is also known as dextrorotatory. If an enantioma rotates light in the counterclockwise direction, that is, to the left-hand side, it is labeled with a minus and is also known as levorotatory. Within an exam context, however, Keep in mind that the ability of a chiral compound to rotate plane polarized light is inherent to the molecular structure and cannot be determined solely based on the molecule's structural formula. You need experimental data or knowledge of the specific rotation in order to determine this. So you cannot just look at a molecule and determine if it's dextrorotatory or, or levorotatory. The other way to differentiate between enantiomers is through interactions with other molecules. Enantiomers can have different interactions with enzymes, receptors, and other chiral molecules in biological systems. Enzymes are highly specific catalysts, and their active sites are often stereospecific. This means that enzymes can distinguish between different stereoisomers, including enantiomers. That's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel as this helps out us a lot. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them down in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Bye.